Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Christmas can truly be Christmas when we celebrate it by giving to those who need it the most. And this brings me to my advocacy today, the act of giving. A story was told of a young homeless boy loitering around a donut shop in one of those European cities in those years after World War II. Just as European nations were beginning to pick up the pieces of their lives, he was desperately hungry. But he had no money. And the smell of hot donut, irresistible. He buried his face in the curve of his joined palms and said a little prayer. A soldier walked in to get himself some donuts without even paying the slightest attention to the hungry boy. He got two packs anyway, and as he walked out of the shop, he handed one of the boxes to the young boy and turned to walk away. The boy grabbed him by the wrist and asked intently, Are you Jesus? The soldier shook his head, smiled and said, I guess you pray to Jesus. I am not Jesus, but there's a little Jesus in all of us, if we allow him to manifest. The summary of all faith is in the passage in Matthew 25, 34 to 46. Referring to the people who inherit eternal life, Jesus said, Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Truly, I tell you, Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. We can stretch this further into the Jewish belief about giving, in which the highest form of giving is that which you give someone so that he does not need to depend on you for handouts forthwith. Put in another way, a gift that makes them start to fish on their own, as opposed to eating the fish you give them and looking up to you for the next. Have you given at that level before? Therefore, in this season, let us all give out of love and not as a show off. Lift others up and resist the desire to be the only rich man in your circles. Remember, a community of one rich man and six poor people is a community of the poor. In a society like ours, where the rich give more to the rich, can you dare to be different? and give your more to those who have nothing to give you back beyond their prayers and goodwill. If you survive 2020, that in itself is a gift. Many were not so lucky. So desire in your heart that in this season, you will give someone something, be it money, food, clothing, or even your time, your call, your smile and warmth, or your attention. Forgiving makes the world a better place to live. Those monies you stash away in foreign land where it is helping Oyibo, while your people suffer. Bring some home. Fix one or two schools. Refurbish and equip some primary health care centers in your local government. Or endow a scholarship for the best student in a subject you love. Those empty properties scattered around Nigeria and abroad where nobody lives in them. Sell one or two and put in a foundation to fund some research in, in science and technology. To whom much is given, 
much as expected. Make impactful giving your new habit. You can start small. You can start this season. In fact, you can start today. Mm. Mm. Two things jump at me from this advocacy. One is that if you survived 2020, mm. uh, that itself, in itself, is a gift. So very true. It's been a, it's been a yeah, really uh, challenging yeah. year. Yeah. Correct. It's, it's been an unusual year, and we have reacted and responded in unusual ways as well. Yeah, uh, at some point during the year, we didn't know who was next to die. I mean, just this morning, I remembered one of the broadcasters on one of the stations in Lagos, Dan Foster, and I just said to myself, my God, he's gone. Mm. You know, so a, a lot of us can just begin to recount the many people who've gone away with 2020. So at this mm. point, it, whether it's restricted uh, Christmas celebration or a lockdown Christmas, we should just be happy. Then again, you said, there's a little Jesus in all of us. Correct. If we allow him to manifest. Little Jesus. It was a very beautiful story. I remember reading it and saying, hmm, you set a prayer, nobody hears your prayers, but you see a manifestation of your prayer. So the first Correct. manifestation for me yes. is that I'm alive at the end of 2020. And so when I'm eating my chicken and my, and my <laughs> rice, sure it's not palisi rice, so I'm going to be sharing, <laughs> I'm going to be sharing with someone and I'm going to have a huge big smile on my face that I survived it. Correct. Yes, right. and uh, I want to say that um, looking at the scripture you quoted, that scripture was actually quoted twice in, 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 in the, the Bible. Bible. Yeah. Uh, there was a part where Jesus used it to set the standard for the last day where he said, I was hungry, you did not feed me. Yes. Because this part you quoted was where he said, I was hungry, you fed me. I was tasty, you gave me water. Correct. There's but, the other side. Yeah, the first time it was raised, because it's in, in theology there's what they call the law of first mention. So when you are interpreting... The law of first, first mention. mention. First mention. Yeah. When you are interpreting scripture, you need to find the place where that particular issue was first mentioned and then see what, how that links to the, the other part. Mention, yeah. So while you have stated one part of it, I want to talk about the second part. Yeah. And that is where Jesus laid the standard for judgment day. That on the day of judgment, it's not, it's not going to be about righteousness. It's not going to be about uh, how intelligent you were or how much you preached or how, how, you, raise the dead how or you raise the dead or how you, do, how you went to church every day. <laughs> Yeah. Chica, yeah. you want to yeah, weigh in on this? Well, don't forget that before the Ten Commandments were given, um, the, the most important thing was love your neighbor as yourself. Yes. Right. And all other, all other things will follow. It is yes. the greatest commandment. Right? And, yeah, and the funny thing is you read the commandment and it's nothing, there's nothing more to say. Depending on your level of intelligence, if God had stopped at love your neighbor as yourself, we should actually be able to make out the commandments by ourselves. I mean, mm. why would you steal if you love your neighbor as yourself or kill or covet your neighbor's wife, you know, and so on, and husband? Um, and so I, I, I quite like this whole thing of, you know, it, it's just about love and, you know, the giving, the looking after others, um, look after yourself as well, looking after others, kindness, you know, those are the things that actually touch me more than, you know, than most of that. It's those simple acts that deal with the major issue. That's the way we should, you know, approach this thing. We shouldn't make it very complicated. You know, we talk about the Constitution. We talk about the laws of the land. It starts getting very complicated. <laughs> if we can just teach the average man to love his neighbor as himself, quite honestly, even lawyers will find their work easier. We'll get to a point where we love, love ourselves. Finally, it is time to draw the curtains on this week's episode of The Advocate. However, The Advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com slash theadvocateng. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next week, same time on this station, let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. Merry Christmas, Chuka.
<laughs> Into you all of. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.